Hi there, it's Simon from simonwoods.com. Four Pinot Noirs in front of me, uh, three countries, um, three producers, and um, let's just dig in. First one I've got, it has got a picture of a fantail on uh, a common site around the, the vineyards and gardens of New Zealand's South Island. Because, dear watcher, we are on Harvey Nichols Pinot Noir from Marlborough. It's 2010 vintage and it's been made from them by the Framingham Winery. Well, there's bits of this that I like and bits of it that I don't like. I like the strawberry and plum aromas, uh, but then there is also this slightly spicy uh, edge of uh, and a slightly stewed character to the fruit, as if someone has taken quite delicate fruit and maybe just overworked it. It doesn't look uh, from the colour as if they've matched it a bit too much, so I'm just wondering whether there was something that was a little bit too ripe that ended up in there. But um, it smells okay. Let's see if, how, what it tastes like. It's okay. Um, and um, I would say exactly the same about the taste as I did about the smell. Um, juiciness, uh, but there's this spicy stewed edge that, uh, um, and I wish the two would come together and make beautiful music, uh, but the finish I'm left with is just a little bit too hot, uh, as, yeah, as if the fruit had gone a little bit too ripe. Um, not sure where the stewed edge come from, comes from, but um, it's okay. Not great, but uh, let's try the next one. We are in uh, Burgundy now with uh, Louis Latour, and uh, it's their Mercury uh, 2009 vintage. So um, Louis Latour, based in uh, the Cote d'Or, one of the top names uh, of Negociants, or most famous names of Negociants in, uh, in the Cote d'Or, but um, the um, Cote Chalonnaise is the bit below uh, where they have uh, villages like... Uh, with Givry, Rui, Montani, and um, Mercury. Well, it's a year older, actually, it's six months older than the one before, uh, but it feels uh, more tight, more closed, um, and uh, it's um, whereas the first one was maybe on that berries and plums, here it feels like there's a, there's a fresher uh, cherry, and uh, yes, it's still got the red berries in there, but um, it feels like it's going to be a slightly perkier wine, and um, got a, a, a stalky edge uh, rather than the stewed spicy edge that I got in the first one. It smells like it's going to be more, um, more interesting and more, you know, more tasty. Now, I like structure in my wines, and um, I'm not a fan of over-ripeness. I imagine serving those two to some people, and I, I, prefer, I prefer the Louis Latour. I like it for it's, it's still got that, that those, those same flavours, uh, but it's got a backbone of acidity and tannin and freshness. Uh, the fruit is uh, juicy, and it's got the, what the French call that sumatuité, uh, just that little hint of overripeness, but it's not gone into out-and-out -out jamminess. Maybe the best way to describe it is get some uh, strawberries that have gone ever so slightly mushy, shove them in a pan, a little bit of sugar in there, half a minute, the juice that oozes out from the, the strawberries in just that little bit of time. That's the type of character I get there. Um, uh, I know lots of people who actually prefer the Harvey Nichols one uh, because it's not got that acidity. Um, it's, it's a softer, uh, more... Um, I was going to say user-friendly and more approachable, uh, but it's it's a, it's a sweeter style, um, and uh, so they will dislike it for exactly the dislike the, the uh, Mercury for exactly the same reasons that I like it. Uh, but um, uh, you're here for my opinions, not someone else's opinions. I prefer this one. Don't be afraid if you prefer the Harvey Nichols, but um, uh, for me that is a a Thane Wayne. Um, final two we've got are you in California and we are in um, uh, Marimar Estate, so uh, Marimar Torres is a um, place in uh, the Russian River Valley in, in, in California, Sonoma Valley, California. Uh, it's the first one I've got, 2008 La Masia um, from, uh, yeah, all, again, all Pinot Noir. We're back to warmth and generosity here. Um, there's a slight licorice character, um, warm, plummy, rounded berry. Um, compared with the, um, the the style that you're getting in Marlborough, um, here it feels like it's going to be a fuller, rich, almost like a rony style of Pinot Noir. Uh, nothing wrong with that as a wine. I mean, we don't all want to, if Pinot Noir tasted like Burgundy all over the world, then you just find the place that made it uh, to the cheapest um, of its ability. So here it's a different style, uh, more flesh on its bones, um, yeah, not the not the acidity, uh, but um, it still smells. It's got like that velvety allure that good Pinot should have. Yes, sweet berries, plums, um, and it's getting into those dark berries. Um, if I have something against it, it's that licorice edge, that edge of overripeness. It's just coming through a little bit too strongly. Uh, Fourteen and a half percent alcohol. Uh, at that level for me. 
Pinot loses just a little bit of its, uh, its nuances and becomes, as I was saying, this roni style. Nothing wrong with that, uh, that spiciness and richness, but um, uh, it misses out on some of the um, uh, svelte edge of Pinot Noir for me. It's, it, it, is, it, it is quite seductive, but it's a bit, um, uh, it's a bit in your face seductive. It's a bit obvious. Don't mind it, but um, let's see whether the final wine uh, can uh, trump it. Um, and it's again Marimar Estate, uh, Don Miguel Vineyard, um, Russian River Valley, um, and, and this is the Christina Cuvée, which I, from what I gather, is a small bottle. Well, from what I gather from reading the back label, is a small bottling of selected barrels from our cellar, all premium French oak. Let's see how that compares with the one before. So, um, more barrel selection and uh, a year older. Well, I don't know whether it's the vintage or barrel selection, but um, here I, feel I get lost, less of that torrid licorice type character that I, I got in the 2008. Um, it feels like there's a fresher, um, yeah, more uh, open-minded and uh, yeah, gentle but more confident uh, character to the wine. Well, so it smells like there's uh, uh, same sort of fruit flavours as those uh, those berries, but more on the red berries and the plums, and there is a little touch of the cherries, very ripe red cherries. But uh, yeah, it just feel, it feels like a fresher, uh, more grown up wine. Well, I've just checked out the alcohol on there, um, and well, I'll do. A, I'll tell you what I think about it first. Uh, there's, I, I I like the aromas, and then when I come to taste it, there is. The, the, it's, I, I don't get the licorice character in quite to quite the same degree that I, I got in the uh, in, in the previous one, uh, and I, I, the, the, there is this the, uh, maybe gentler plummy cherry fruit, but it just feels a bit top heavy, and then the finish I'm left with is slightly warm. Then I look at the alcohol, and it's 14.9%. Um, makes me think that um, uh, they're growing grapes in a place that's too hot for Pinot Noir. Um, I. I, I want a wine like that to have some freshness, to have some perkiness and alive, rather than trying to assault me. Um, I, I, I don't mind being assaulted by wines that, are, that have got high alcohol, but when I think of Pinot Noir, I think of plant, plant it somewhere that's cool. Plant it somewhere where you don't have to uh, wait for it to get to 15% alcohol to be ripe. Um, uh, I think my favourite wine here would probably be uh, that one with uh, a 50-50 measure between... Oh, I'm going to try um, I'm going to try some of the um, uh, Christina with some of the uh, Mercury in there because uh, both of them, they, I, I think that uh, it will add flesh to the Mercury and add structure to the uh, Marimar Torres. And um, I don't recommend doing this at home unless... Um, no one's watching. It's actually quite good, um, and uh, this is where blenders blend, blenders do make their money. Um, I, it, it does add freshness to uh, that one. It does add flesh to uh, to the mercury. Um, uh, but still, I'd say that the uh, the, the Lula or Mercury is my, my favourite of these four. Um, so, um, I mean, Pinot Noir is, is a confusing beast. Uh, don't be afraid to blend your own at the table, um, but um, you shouldn't really have to. Uh, uh, hopefully, if you find a good vineyard and a good producer, then someone's going to get it right in the first place without you having to do any jiggery pokery and uh, cocktail shaking yourself. Um, I'm going to go away now, and uh, maybe I think I'll finish this glass rather than uh, have a glass of uh, any of the individual ones, and I will see you on a future video. Bye.